Hello everyone and welcome to episode 23 of SSTO Space Program. As you know, Duna colony ship has arrived to Duna and today we will focus on establishing a permanent colony on the surface of Duna. The outpost that we need to build is quite large, but uh, it won't be self-sufficient and we actually won't finish building it today because, well, it's gonna be a lot of launches, a lot of landings and a lot of work. So let's jump right into it. So the first step in establishing a colony on Duna will be landing this mobile workshop vehicle that you can see right here. This vehicle is designed to land on its own on Duna. As you can see it has VTOL engines and RCS system and actually everything it needs to safely land on Duna, including parachutes. And we will try to land this vehicle in a spot that has the highest concentration or almost the highest concentration of ore close to the equator because we will need to refuel the shuttles and sky cranes and uh, well all the launch vehicles that we'll use on this once they get to the surface of duna because well we need to perform multiple multiple launches and uh, landings to get all the materials down from orbit um, i decided to use parachutes as well as engines to land this thing because well doing it in a very in a full powered way was actually pretty difficult and since on Duna there is still some kind of atmosphere it would be it was just more beneficial to use it but as you can see the vehicle has been landed safely and now it's ready to deploy and as you've also noticed probably in its cargo bay we have a very small and also adorable Akita rover that will use to transport the small attachable case uh, items around and will use actually to move around our engineers to you know, establish connections between base pieces and refuel our ships. So the workshop has been landed and the next vehicle that we need to land is actually the one that will do all the refueling and mining and everything and also carry all the heavy loads. And this vehicle you see right here is designed to do exactly that. It's a very multi multi-purpose vehicle. It can, um, is, it is equipped with a crane so it can lift heavy loads up to 40 tons and uh, everything that will actually fit underneath it. And uh, it can also land on its own. It has one VTOL engine, but quite powerful, and a couple of parachutes actually to keep it kind of pointed towards the ground properly. And um, as well as an ISRU unit and a couple of drills. So this rover is actually pretty big and uh, is also nuclear powered, so we don't have to worry about, uh, you know, running out of electricity to maintain all the operations. And uh, as you can see, this one also was landed safely. The remaining Kerbals on our Duna colony ship can still stay there for um, a couple of years, so, so we still have some time before uh, you know they run out uh, of uh, supplies and get into some sort of trouble. So we have quite a lot of time left, at least on the colony ship, to establish the um, fully functional colony. So now we have a mobile workshop down on the surface, as well as our you know cargo vehicle. So the next thing that we need to do is uh, deliver some building materials to the surface and one of those building materials that we'll need to deliver are material kits um, the bases will be constructed using ground construction mod that is bundled with mks and to build something using a ground construction with mks you actually need two things you need those D diy containers that you can still see attached on the ship as well as loads and loads of material kits our base buildings will be quite large so so we'll need a lot of them and um, the shuttles that I've designed that uh, have um, a bunch of containers inside uh, their cargo bay uh, can transport those material kits as well as other goods and uh, those containers can be refitted and I must say I am really really proud of those shuttles because they as you can see can land on Duna uh, in a fully powered way and have a lot of fuel actually enough to get back into orbit without refilling. Uh, we'll refill them most of the time, we'll refill them on the surface, but they are also super easy to fly. It's almost impossible to crash this shuttle if you're paying attention. So after the shuttle was landed, uh, there was a lot of work to be done. A lot of, I would say, yeah, construction work maybe. A lot of, you know, <laughs> a lot of things that had to be done. So the first thing that um, uh, I decided that we'll do would be establishing a connection between our minor rover and uh, the uh, shuttle. First to fuel it up slightly and um, while we are waiting for um, the um, uh, DY containers to get back from uh, orbit. And the second would be to pump the uh, um, material kits from the shuttle to the container that is still attached to the miner. Um, <laughs> as you can see that required some work using a Kerbal inventory and Kerbal attachment system and uh, using those um, small connector ports and linking the vessels together we could transfer all the resources 
and then start the drills and ISRU to actually start refilling the shuttle with fuel. That wasn't entirely necessary, but um, if we can do it, then why not? So, with material kits down on the surface, the next thing that we need to do is to bring one of those DIY containers down on the ground and uh, establish a first building on the surface of Duna. And the order in which those buildings are um, going to be built is actually quite important. Um, the base is devised into modules that have different functions. So the first module or the first base building that we'll construct on the surface of Duna is called uh, Command because I was unimaginative and I couldn't come up with a better name for it. And actually combines everything in one place. So it has a you know small habitat space, it has some greenhouses, it has you know power generation systems, uh, all the antennas to maintain connection with other ships and with KSC, as well as workshop and some basic storage space. It basically is a very small base that also has some functions that will then be used by other buildings once we build them. And as you can see the sky crane is also very easy to fly, it has some parachutes and uh, very powerful vector engines so killing our velocity was very simple and actually this was done to simplify pinpoint landings because as you know pinpoint landings are just simpler with high thrust vehicles. So as you can see our sky crane also landed very close to our base without any problems whatsoever and the next phase of our operation could begin. And this required driving our small cargo vehicle, the one that carries all the um, attachable Kerbal inventory system uh, connectors uh, to the landing site where we landed our DIY containers. Unfortunately, uh, I couldn't use the jetpack if anything was actually in the Kerbal inventory, so I had to be creative uh, when it came to attaching different objects. And uh, we will use those connectors as well as um, crane systems to deliver the package closer to our base. And uh, to do that, first we needed to liberate the spot and detach the uh, material kits container and then drive over to the location where the DIY container was landed. And then, uh, as you can see, that's a standard um, Kerbal inventory system stuff. Attach all the ropes to the, um, to the connector ports and then use the crane to lift the cargo crates and drive to the location where we would like our base to be built. So this minor vehicle um, is actually pretty powerful and uh, was, was actually very useful. I, I would say that this was arguably the most useful vehicle that was um, built for this entire purpose. So after picking a right spot that uh, seemed to be the most flat in the area where we landed, I um, decided to leave the uh, container there, uh, pack the uh, um, connectors back to the Kerbal inventory and then move the vehicle a little bit out park it in a safe location and then you know get Kerbal back to the workshop connect the uh, material kits container to the workshop so it will have uh, enough material kits to actually build this whole base building then building process could begin this operation was then repeated for every single building and I actually decided to cut out most of it because a it was quite repetitive and B it was actually quite boring after you know the first time you see it it was it was just a little bit boring but we had a problem at this point because as you could see the building time was about 49 days a little bit more but the hub time for our kerbals was less than that and uh, that was because actually this workshop was designed to house two engineers and i brought a pilot and a scout with us and forgot that th they could not stay there for um for such a long time so to counter that i decided that uh we can bring our crew transport from orbit without any kerbals, but it will count as an extra living space and therefore extend the um, hub time for our kerbals a little bit more because we don't want those engineers turning into tourists while they are building the first building um, on Duna. So yeah, so I decided to bring the uh, crew transport on the surface of Duna. And as you can see, this plane also has a very interesting landing system. It actually has a VTOL engine and parachutes and uh, the reason why the system is doubled is those parachutes are actually pointing the um, are actually making sure that the vessel um, is pointed properly and um, you don't really have to worry about the proper orientation they also help you slow down and then you can safely land on the surface of Duna and with the plane landed uh, the hub time was extended enough so we would be uh, able to safely build our building before our kerbals turn into tourists and as you can see after just 49 days the building was built and this is our first building on the surface of Duna. So it has a docking port so the next thing that we could do was dock the entire workshop 
to our base because the mobile workshop does not need to be mobile anymore actually everything else will be constructed and erected around this particular area then our cargo vehicle our Duna Miner was also used to uh, transport the material kits container closer to our base because well this is the storage space for um, all the uh, material kits that will deliver from orbit and this was also used uh, using Kerbal inventory and Kerbal attachment system by attaching cranes and uh, you know connectors to to the container lifting it up and uh, driving to the location where our base will be and once the container was in place and unloaded uh, another connector port was added and then uh, it was connected to our workshop. So so now when we land more shuttles uh, We will connect those shuttles directly to that container and uh, refill the material kit So now another thing that we needed to do is repack the parachutes on our sky crane and we were ready to take off in our Orbital shuttle as you can see we were taking off in a dust storm and those of you who are watching my JCB pioneer series Also know that dust storms sometimes in different games can be quite dangerous on um, Mars like planets, but here in KSP fortunately they are not so dangerous They are just limiting your visibility and uh, that might be a potential issue during landing But when you are getting into orbit, that's less of a problem and it just provides for a beautiful view on Duna quite dangerous and beautiful view so getting into orbit with this vehicle is actually pretty simple and uh, we had no problems getting there establishing a rendezvous with our uh, duna colony ship and i'm showing you this only to kind of run you through the process of getting this vehicle into orbit we needed to perform multiple um landings and launches of both the sky crane and the um shuttles so so that got quite repetitive and uh, and it wasn't, you know, exceptionally difficult because those vehicles were designed not to be most efficient but most uh, reliable. So I'm pretty sure that you can fly them without problems. And obviously all the craft files are in the description as usual. And um, here we are with our Duna Sky Crane back out uh, colony ship getting another building. And the next building that we needed to build was a greenhouse because, well... Now the habitation was kind of solved, at least in short term, but we needed to provide our Kerbals with enough uh, supplies and means to generate those supplies. So, as you noticed, we also can uh, refill our Sky Crane and Shuttle at Duna Colony Ship, because as you know, it also carries quite a lot of excess fuel dedicated for that purpose. And once this was done, <laughs> again, we were, we were back on our way to our newly established Duna base. This time, unfortunately, I had a little bit less luck landing and I landed quite far away from our base, but that wasn't a big problem because this uh, minor rover is actually pretty fast and uh, even when I tipped over the sky crane, actually writing it up was not a big deal. So after getting all the supplies and our engineer back into in the seat of our Duna Miner, as you can see, we could drive to, to the location at blasting speeds of over 40 meters per second load the package and get back to our base that uh yeah that process was repeated multiple times and then you know it's it just it was all the same all the time all the six buildings that i built up to this point um that will be shown in this video was pretty much the same story bring the, land the package bring the package unpack the uh diy container bring enough material kits and uh and construct the building so the first step in constructing a building using ground construction mod is actually deploying the um, DOI container and we could do that but to speed up the construction process I deployed um, the inflatable workshop that we had attached to our base so now we would have two workshops we needed to bring a little bit more material kits because those buildings require quite a lot of them to to actually build and uh, the bigger ones actually almost uh, uh, use the entire load of our shuttle so so yeah, so here I wanted to run you through um, the actually the uh, entire process of um, delivering um, the full package of material kits from orbit and uh, also to show you and to prove to you kind of how cool and easy was um, flying this shuttle and um, how um, how actually easy it was to land it um, very close to our base and uh, here actually I missed the landing spot by a couple of kilometers 
and uh, that was not a big deal because you can just bring the shuttle over and um, around and um, you know you have quite a lot of fuel and uh, you can fly back to our base no problem without a remote um, danger of running out of fuel and then land gently and taxi over to the location where you need. I'm I must say that I am really happy with how this vehicle turned out to be. It's it's really cool. So. As you can see, the time on the buildings actually got down a little bit, and this is because we could level our crew once the command down was um, established, because um, it has the same functionality as a stock uh, mobile processing lab. So there were a couple of other things that I wanted to do, uh, and one of those was delivering more DIY containers from our Duna colony ship. And, uh, since this Kai Crane was so overpowered, I uh, thought that um, instead of delivering them one by one, we could maybe actually take two. And uh, um, and this is what, I, what I've what i done. So I decided that uh, the next two buildings that we'll build will be a habitation dome, which is a, a very big building designed to house a lot of kerbals for quite a long time. And it turned out to be quite an overkill in terms of, uh, you know, <laughs> hub space. And a mining station that would um, produce fuel for our base uh, in situ. So after loading those two DIY containers and uh, our um, sky crane and refilling the sky crane using the fuel that we had and doing a colony ship that was also landed again. And uh, this time, unfortunately, I could not deploy the uh, parachutes using staging. Uh, that was wasn't a big deal. But uh, again, I uh, tipped the sky, sky crane over. I uh, for some reason I couldn't land it properly. And the last thing I wanted to do to speed up the construction process a little bit more was to bring our three veteran Kerbals that we had landed um, on the first landing actually on the surface of Duna. The very first mission on Duna that uh, delivered the, uh, our famous rover Endurance. Uh, and we needed to fly the SSTO that was landed there uh, to our base. And um, before that happened we obviously needed to pull our Kerbals. <laughs> because they were frozen, because they had very little supplies and uh, not enough living space to actually get back to Kerbin. But that was the only problem they had. The, this SSTO has quite a lot of fuel left. or well, maybe not way more, but uh, enough Delta V to get back to Kerbin. So making a short uh, suborbital jump to our base was, um, wasn't something that uh, was particularly difficult. And we still had quite a lot of oxidizers, so we could uh, actually use the VTOL landing support system. And um, yeah, and uh, this plane was landed, no problem. I landed it quite far away from our base on purpose because I wanted to uh, land it so it would be just outside of the physics range so it would not count as um, you know another vehicle that need to be loaded when the game was operating because with all the vehicles and you know base buildings that we'll be establishing that uh, you know framework was something that we needed to consider and we had a very fast rover that we could use to bring those kerbals back to our base. And this is precisely what I did. I brought um, Bill Kerman and Jebediah and Bob. And that not only allowed us to crew, um, at least partially, the second construction workshop, but also we could use both construction workshops to build this another building, which is our greenhouse dome. And um, yeah, as you can see, it's uh, not exactly oriented as I would like it to be. But I thought that, hey, we have a very powerful vehicle on the surface. So why we can't just give it a nudge and, you know, kind of push it <laughs> and turn it a little bit so it'll be oriented um, in a more um, nicer way. So after giving it um, a bunch of uh, a couple of pushes and nudges and uh, and you know being more happy with how it's uh, how it's actually uh, placed I uh, used um, a Kerbal inventory system to place connector ports on both airlocks and uh, attach those buildings together. I tried first to use this uh, ground pylons but um, for some reason that did not work very well after adding multiple uh, different connections, those those pylons were getting buggy very fast. So here is the first attempt where I actually tried to use a ground pylon to, to connect those two buildings together and kind of hold them in place because as you know, those ground pylons can be actually firmly attached to the ground. But uh, as I said, that, that turned, to be, uh, turned out to be quite buggy in the long run. So I had to get rid of that. And uh, here you can see how the refueling process on the surface was going and um, when our engineer was in the seat of our minor vehicle um, that got actually uh, the refueling process was really fast and then and then the whole story was repeated multiple times. So the sky crane was landed with two extra packages as you could see we put them in place and uh, 
that required a bunch of trips for both our mining um, vehicle and the small Aketa rover and then more and more deliveries for uh, <laughs> more and more material kits. And uh, yeah, as you can see here, we're constructing the uh, Habitat Dome and then um, uh, the mining station was also constructed. And, uh, you know, for every building, it was pretty much the same. Deploy all the modules that are deployable and then give this um, small nudge to push it in place. Uh, this building that we're building right now is the mining station. This mining station is almost entirely stock except for um, some some ore containers that were just uh, you know visually more appealing but there was a stock version of that mining station available in one of my videos and the next step was as uh, as you might have expected delivering more boxes from orbit and um, placing those boxes in right positions and um, delivering more material kits and transferring them to our base and uh, you know getting stuff done and um, yeah I've already told you that I liked flying this uh, the shuttle and uh, yeah I did it's actually pretty cool it's a really fun experience <laughs> I like it so much it's so fun so here we are our base being constructed and um, multiple buildings are being erected around it as you can see uh, so we have a command dome a habitat dome and uh, a greenhouse dome and then a factory dome that will do most of our processing a fuel storage and we are still missing two storage buildings, one for liquid materials and one for um, non-liquid materials. And I am also quite sure that this won't be even close to enough in terms of making this base self-sufficient. But we also run into some unexpected problems here because um, this base was designed to be self-sufficient in terms of supplies production right from the start. But as it turned out, Ground construction does not let you transfer any resources in the buildings that you are producing and because of that we are missing machinery and well because of that our greenhouse dome is not able to grow any new supplies in an efficient method we can only use hydroponics which is which is very fast but not very efficient so we still have quite a lot of fertilizer and supplies on our Duna colony ship, so our Kerbals won't be starving anytime soon. But we are missing some key resources to actually make this base work. But this is something that will be fixed in one of the future videos. And for now, I would like to thank you very much for watching and I hope that you've enjoyed. And if you did, please consider liking this video. If you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I would also like to thank Sharax and Joe Loffen and all my patrons on Patreon. You guys are amazing and your support is awesome and very much needed. You can also find me on Vidme and on Twitch. Links are in the description. My name is Mark Frem and I'll see you next time.